Hello beautiful ladies, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Alana Palm, Christian Trauma Release and Mind Renewal Specialist, and I help Christian women overcome overwhelm, fear, frustration, and trauma from a Christ-centered perspective. If this interests you, please continue watching. Hello ladies, good morning. I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about a topic I am so passionate about, all about forgiveness. And if you're anything like me, you've experienced pain and hurt in your life and you have found it a bit hard to forgive at times, right? Because people do things and we think, well, how do we forgive that? Like some things almost seem unforgivable. And there's almost like a bridge we get to cross over when we choose to forgive someone. It's kind of letting go of our own um it's letting go of control in a way of making them pay or making them feel bad or getting revenge in some way and we actually end up taking a step out of that into this place of almost being uncomfortable going well how do i let it go like if they don't pay for this how are they going to learn or how how are they going to um how are we going to stop them from doing this again to somebody right so we we want somebody to be held accountable and I totally understand because I have been through my own story of trauma, abuse, forgiveness, um, and I want to teach you today what has worked for me. So with my story, and some of you know a little bit about my story, when people hurt me in the past, and I'll tell you a little bit about some of those situations, but when people hurt me, I would hold on to a lot of bitterness and resentment. I wouldn't forgive them. I wouldn't let it go because... First of all, in some cases, I wasn't a Christian yet, and I didn't even understand the power of forgiveness. And really, I didn't want to let them off the hook. You know, I was hurt. I was bothered by what they did. I was deeply hurt in some cases and felt so torn down and thought, how could a human being do this? And I just, I didn't want to say what they did was okay. And I thought if I forgave them, it was basically saying, oh, what they did was okay. Forgiving myself was the hardest thing I think for me in my own regrets, especially when I became a Christian because I felt so guilty and so ashamed that I had done all of these things that were not of God and I didn't know how to just feel his forgiveness. So this pain inflicted on me over the years, whether it was from me doing it to myself or other people, it remained deep inside and I just felt so unhappy, unworthy, unlovable and so far from God. I struggled in all my relationships, especially my intimate relationships, either, <coughs> excuse me, pleasing people so they would love me, like being really needy and trying to make them happy and like doing all I could to make the relationship work or pushing them away because I was afraid they were gonna hurt me or they didn't show up for me a certain way, but all of it was based in fear. Right, All of the people pleasing and the codependency and pushing them away was all based in fear. And my relationship with myself, with other people, and with God were always difficult and messy. Right, So when I became a Christian and I got to know God, everything, like the way that we do one thing is the way we do everything to some degree. So if I'm pushing God away and keeping him at a distance, I'm also doing it in my life in other areas. It's just typical, which is why it's so fun when we deal with one particular issue that you're having, like a problem in the way you're showing up in one area of your life, it actually like sprinkles over into all the other areas, which is really cool to see. Excuse me. But I had no idea at the time that letting go, that forgiving and letting go of the pain could actually help me love myself, expel the lies from the enemy that had gotten into me about myself, and actually gain freedom emotionally and mentally. <clears throat> I had no idea that all of that could come from choosing to forgive. So I had a choice. I could hold on to the anger and resentment forever and like be in control and make them pay and hold them accountable and all of the things from a place of anger and resentment and, and all of the pain that came up, or I could let go and forgive. And it was a choice and it was, not an easy one, but so worth it. And I mean, you have a choice as well. So I want to talk to you today about why forgiveness is a good choice for you. 
I will never tell you what to do, but I'm going to invite you into this idea that God wants you to forgive for your sake, for your freedom. And he wants you to live in the abundance of joy and peace that he has died for you to have. And while you are holding on to all that resentment and pain and anger, it's very hard to have peace and joy in that environment within yourself. Instead of dwelling on the past, even when your feelings would rather do anything but that, right? So it's really choosing to go to God for help and comfort instead of just being in your feelings. Being aware and having boundaries, right? Forgiveness is being aware, gaining awareness and discernment and putting boundaries up, right? Boundaries are so important. And it is allowing the person to answer to God, not to you or me for their sins and wrongdoings. It's given for your own sake. Forgiveness is extended for your sake so that you don't have to live with the burden of hatred. It's giving up the right to seek revenge. This is a hard one because a lot of times when we're in, you know, we're resenting somebody or we're in resistance to somebody, then we want to have revenge on them. And revenge can look different for everybody. Sometimes revenge is just pushing someone away and blocking them out of our life or not speaking to them, right? Sometimes revenge is, how can I hurt them? So forgiveness is giving up the right to seek revenge. And it is releasing the thoughts of bitterness that rule in your heart. Just releasing those thoughts of bitterness, those feelings of bitterness. And it's holding the person accountable so they can repent. So part of forgiveness is holding somebody accountable, right? We do want to hold people accountable because part of honoring somebody and truly loving somebody is not allowing them to sin against you. So if you just allow somebody to sin against you over and over and over again, you're not honoring them, you're not loving them because you're not holding them accountable to the higher standard that God has for them. When we hold people accountable and responsible for themselves, it's an amazing opening for them to potentially see more of God. But if we just let them keep doing what they're doing, abusing us, manipulating us, gaslighting us, hurting us, Right? We're not holding them accountable. That is something we get to do even when we choose forgiveness. <clears throat> and I want to go on to what forgiveness is not, because this might be helpful in anyone else who's listening. So forgiveness is not condoning what someone did or making it all right. It's not reversing the things that have happened to you. <clears throat> so if we, we're not forgiving them and saying, all right, well, what they did wasn't that bad. We're not saying that what they did didn't happen, right? We're not letting them off the hook. We are literally just letting go, right? But none of that goes along with letting go. We're not forgetting what they did. We're not saying that the pain that we've suffered isn't painful, isn't awful, and pretending we weren't hurt because we can still be hurt and be in pain while also extending forgiveness, just like we can be hurt and in pain and still experience joy. And then we want to go on to self-forgiveness because maybe you can forgive others, but it's hard to forgive yourself. And this is an area where a lot of women struggle. And I've, been, I've struggled to hear too, for sure. I carried so much guilt and shame and unforgiveness, and I carried it around for decades. I condemned myself for past choices and I wondered if God truly forgave me for all the things I'd done and it affected how I felt about myself, the way I related to others and how much I trusted God. And he showed me that what I needed to do was forgive myself and continue honoring him with my life. I also had to stop condemning myself for what I'd done because Romans 8 1 says, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And as I began to heal, I saw God so much more clearly. And in turn, I saw myself more clearly. And my self-love increased. I was able to share that inner love with others. And as we love ourselves more, the things we don't, we don't um, stand for as much from people, right? We don't like allow people to hurt us as much because we respect and love ourselves enough to say, no, this isn't okay. It's when we struggle with that self-love and self-respect that we will sometimes be in a situation where we allow somebody to treat us in a way that's not okay. And the second commandment says, love your neighbor as yourself. So based on his word and on my experience, 
I needed to love myself so that I could love my neighbor with God's love, right? So how do you love somebody? I mean, loving yourself helps you love other people, whether they've hurt you or not. It helps you pray for them. It helps you forgive them. It helps you to have boundaries with them and not let them close to you because you respect yourself enough not to. And healing that resentment and that bitterness that had held me back for decades meant that I could finally let go of the past and move forward. And so can you. Your healing actually has the power to shift everything in your life. And it all starts with letting go of the pain and the hurt inside and healing yourself. All that love that you have comes from that place inside you. And if there's still a lot of brokenness within, it will affect how you love others and how you love yourself, right? So if you know that you felt like that brokenness inside, that lack of self-love and self-respect, if you if you're just tired of being hurt and treated badly by people and you want something different in your relationships, then book a set free strategy session with me if you know you're ready to actually take the next step or sign up for my five day experience in God's love intensive. Um, if you have any questions or something comes up for you and you're watching this replay and you want to put it in the comments and you want me to see it, please tag me. I would love to be able to address you personally or send me a private message. So I would love to um, support you in the intensive. It's free. Just join us. It's fun. It's deep. It's profound. Lots of good stuff. And, um, you know, book us that free strategy session if that's something you want too. And I hope to see you in the five day intensive. I will see you next week on here as well for the Thursday live. And I look forward to being in touch with you soon. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you felt connected to this content and it helped you in some way, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, check the description below for some special gifts just for you. See you in the next video.